Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. I'm with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology, and I'm also with the, I have a new affiliation uh, now. I'm also with the, with Carleton University, the DGES, uh, Department of Geography and Environmental Studies. Since I'm teaching a first year physical geography course this term to about 100 students or so. So in this particular uh, video uh, series, I'm going to be talking about the global, uh, the, the uh, impact of climate change on the global food supply. Basically climate change is turning out to be an enormous threat and the global food supply is one of the weakest points. So basically, I think it's rather fitting that um, I have a red flashing light here just to signify that we have a global climate change emergency and we have to deal with it. Otherwise, we're going to take a massive hit to our food supply, um, which will then wake the world up. Um, of course, people in rich Western countries that only uh, pay a fraction of their income on food will be less affected people that pay half or a third of their income on um, food will be greatly affected and in fact there'll be mass starvation in these countries and these are the countries that have contributed the least to climate change. Um, completely unfair but that's the reality of the situation. So if you just go to Google Images, Google Google Images, um, and have a look at, um, type in global food supply climate change and you get all kinds of different um, graphs and maps and so on talking about the global food supply threat from climate change. So in particular there's heat waves and droughts and soil erosion and there's ground level ozone and tropospheric ozone that are toxic to plants. There's more and more weeds that are resistant to um, herbicides. There's more and more pests that are resistant to pesticides. Um, there's plant diseases. There's um, not, there, there, because there's, we have monocultures for growing food and we're getting um, these diseases and they take out the entire crop. If we have a monoculture and also soil salinization from sea level rise and also from improper um, not non-optimal uh, irrigation practices. So climate change is causing extreme weather events. We're getting more powerful storms. We're getting droughts in other regions. And when we have storms, we have torrential rains and floods and waterlogged lands and soil erosion, etc., etc. So have a look. Um, just go to Google Images and have a look at some of these um, things. Global food supply, climate change. My colleague, uh, Peter Carter, who's a co-founder of Arctic Methane Emergency Group, um, put, has this great website on climate change and food security. The 11,000 year period of relative climate stability in which agriculture developed is over, Lester Brown. And there's a book from Lester Brown Full Planet, Empty Plates, which is excellent. Basically, uh, Peter presented just recently at the American Geophysical Union Conference on um, disastrous committed climate change, heat and drought, and the effect on food supply. World Bank, I'll talk about this in more detail. World Bank says the world needs to produce at least 50% more food by 2050, but climate change could cut crop yields by more than 25%, going in the wrong direction. Right now, um, the IPCC, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, AR5, Assessment Report 5, um, suggests that there's positive and negative projections of impacts on crop yields that are counterbalanced balancing each other somewhat on a global level. But going forward, uh, the balance becomes increasingly negative and we don't get, you know, growing seasons are longer. Um, a slight increase in temperature can increase crop yields, but there's very limited ranges at which you have decent yields and you exceed those temperatures and you also have drought 
and you're in trouble here. Um, and then there's reports as you go down, massive worst Mediterranean drought in 900 years, um, has human fingerprints, greatly decreases crop yields in the Mediterranean, drought and heat take toll on crop yields, um, and uh, so yields of cereal harvests are dropping, have dropped between 64 and 2007. The world is on a collision course for civilization to collapse due to food shortages by 2040, peak food production, et cetera, et cetera. So have a look at this site. It's got excellent information on it. And I will now talk about Peter's recent um, poster at this conference, at the AGU conference. So this is an overall pic image of the poster. There's a lot of detail. He talks about what's happening today. We're 1.2 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial, above um, pre-industrial. Okay, that he talks about the where we're heading. 1.5, 2, 3, 4 to 5, how civilization basically collapses you know, when you start getting over to here. And there's lots of other information, and I'll start looking at some of this stuff here in a bit more detail from a zoomed in view. So here's, here's where we are right now. Um, this is relative to, uh, sorry, not pre-industrial, 1880 to 1920. If you take the average baseline there, you know, we're 1.2 above it. We were 1.13 above it in 2015, 1.11 2014, um, and um, I don't know if that's a typo in 2013, I think it is. But anyway, um, the, so CO2 is accelerating upwards, right? The, the, the CO2 is, we're reaching record levels of, of CO2, the official number Oh, for 2016, I believe is 2.77, which is a bit lower than this. But from day to day or from month to month, the numbers were actually quite over three ppm rise. We had 3.04 in the previous year, 2015, 3.05, and these are record rates. So the greenhouse gases are accelerating. This is the CO2 rising, methane's also rising, nitrous oxide, so the equivalent fraction is 485 to 490 uh, parts per million. Um, and this is um, bringing us to uncharted territory. Um, basically, um, we're, so we're reaching, we, we're in an emergency situation. Um, you know, people that, think we have a bright future this century um, will be um, sadly uh, are sadly misinformed at the moment we're heading to a dark age of decline from abrupt climate change and declining uh, food supplies globally so we have to be concerned about the survival of civilization here we have a global climate emergency it's being ignored at the moment by governments and we are going to have massive declines of food production in the near future. Um, we need to slash fossil fuel emissions. We need to remove CO2 from the atmosphere. We need to cool the Arctic. And I've mentioned that in many previous videos. The US Trump fossil fuel energy scenario will accelerate the collapse of civilization and the human population. So we can't clearly allow this to happen. So let's go back up to the top here. If I can get my mouse working properly. I don't know what's going on here. This is a, okay. So these are the scenarios for 1.5 and two degrees. Um, this is a temperature, um, temperature rising and the change, of course, the Arctic regions are getting, getting it, the rise uh, more than anywhere else that disrupts the jet stream, which I've talked about a lot. This is uh, where the main agricultural regions are in the world and where the heating is, and you can clearly do a match or a correlation between them and see that many agricultural regions are, are, will be severely threatened by the temperature rises. 
This is in the U.S. food production. <coughs> Excuse me. U.S. food production uh, being severely threatened. Um, this is from the uh, representative concentration pathway 4.5 uh, with a 2.2 degree rise and 1.5 in this case. Um, and also um, there'll be increased drought and uh, effects, uh, negative effects on, on global food supply. Now we'll move over a couple frames here. And this is a three degree world and a four degree world. And of course, most scientists, if you ask them, uh, say that civilization cannot exist um, in a three or four degree world. So we're, re we're heading there rapidly and we have an emergency situation on our hands. And here's some more information. The intended nationally determined concentrations from Paris, they're leading to three degrees Celsius by 2100, greater than five degrees Celsius equilibrium when all the longer term um, effects take place. And um, this of course, of course is not acceptable. You know, um, the Trump scenario unleash, you know, unleash America's 50 trillion in untapped shale oil and natural gas reserves plus hundreds of years of coal reserves. You know, this, this is unbelievably irresponsible and idiotic and will take down civilization and obviously cannot be allowed to happen. Um, these are some intergovernmental panel on climate change quotes talking about food and studies, negative impacts of climate change on crop yields. And, you know, it's very likely that heat waves will occur more often, last longer, extreme precipitation events will be more intense and frequent. And it's just a matter of time before we get um, simultaneous events that take out large portions of the food supply leading to very high prices, etc., and a, a global food shortage. So have a look at this site, and uh, there's lots of information on there. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start... I attended a presentation by a Department of Fisheries and Oceans um, emeritus professor, Dr. Jake Rice, on food security, climate change, and oceans as a source of food. And so I'm going to talk about, you know, many people think that the oceans and aquaculture, etc., might be able to uh, sustain much larger populations. So I'm going to discuss, um, I had discussions with um, Jake about his presentation, and he's given me the okay to discuss his presentation uh, here in this video. So the origin of the talk, he attended in Peru in October 2016, the, um, the Asia Pacific Economic Conference, a symposium on climate change and food security. Um, about, of the attendees, about three quarters were terrestrial experts, 25% marine experts, um, Jake being one of them. There were sessions on large-scale agriculture, small-scale agricultural fisheries, and aquaculture. The, the background was the IPCC AR5 scenarios. All of the presentations and the reports are available, or you just Google APEC Climate Symposium. You can find all the information there. So this particular talk, um, it uh, discusses um, Jake's presentation highlights of some other presentations, and basically what lies ahead. Okay, so this was a keynote talk, as I say, this is from an emeritus professor, and the purpose is to talk, is it was to talk about fisheries and global food security. So I'm going to continue uh, this presentation in, uh, I'm going to divide this presentation into different parts and I'll continue with the next video, the rest of this. Thank you.